Hi folks and welcome back to Fishing with Den. In this episode I've decided I'm going to show you how to make some pole floats. Not just ordinary pole floats but specifically pole floats like this one which is just a 0.4 of a gram float but with interchangeable tips. As you see you can take that one out and you can put the new one in. And what that means is of course that when you're fishing away and you've got a background which suits a yellow top that's great and then the weather changes or the clouds come over and you need a dark top or you need a red top and then it's not so great because with a pole you have to take the whole rig off and get everything set up again so what could be easier then than just to change the tip and that's what this one's all about so here we go so normally then if I was making a small pole float like this one I'd probably end up making it out of um, balsa which you can buy in model shops or some DIY shops and then I'd cut a piece off and put it into the chuck of this uh, drill this is my float making lathe as you see put it in there turn it to shape using just a bit of sandpaper and then make the float that way but because I've decided that I wanted to use these interchangeable tips so I can change that to a yellow one for example just by doing that I have to make sure that this fits inside the body of the float and strange as it may seem this stuff which is that sort of reed that you find on the riverbank is really good for it it's really strong it's hollow and it's very buoyant just don't use bolt uh, sorry excuse me don't use bamboo because that is much more dense much heavier and it doesn't work so what I've done is I've cut a few sections of it down and if I just put this in here a second so I can show you I'm going to insert that into here I'll glue it in position and then as I say we'll be able to change the the tips without any issues whatsoever so the first thing for me to do then is to cut some of these bodies to the right size to make up uh, something like 0 0.4, 0 0.3 of a gram, maybe 0 0.5 of a gram floats uh, with slightly thicker tops than, than this one admittedly but the venues I'm going to be fishing on are only three feet deep but they're actually quite big venues so they do get quite badly affected by tow and a little bit more buoyancy in this case won't hurt and because I don't exactly know how much weight these things are going to take I've cut this one off to 50 millimeters I've taken this coarse sandpaper and taken off this uh, shiny exterior if you don't take that off all that happens is your paint and your varnish doesn't stick so take it back using the sandpaper till it's nice and uh, smooth and you can feel that there's no waxiness there anymore and that's the way to go okay so I've cut the first body at 50 millimeters that seems to be a reasonable um, starting point and I've also cut down this piece of plastic to about two centimeters long and just so you know the piece of plastic comes from these things which are just uh, gel pens now I find that pens when you go and buy them in the shops the little refill thing here the the inside has different diameters this is the biggest one I can find if you just go and buy the standard blue pens they have very small diameter ones but this one will take a two millimeter barbecue stick down it and what you do is you pull off the nib part run it under a warm tap and the whole thing just runs out and you end up with a, an empty tube which is pretty flexible and it actually works really well for interchangeable tips would you believe so for the other end if I'm going to be using a barbecue skewer which is this two millimeter skewer here as the stem if I put it in at the moment it just woggles around like that which isn't going to work is it so the easy answer then is to take the little piece of plastic which is going to hold the insert take your barbecue skewer put a small amount of the barbecue skewer in allowing enough room there for the tip insert to go in I'm going to glue that in place in a minute but just to show you the principle take it push it down through the body of the float and leave it so there's a small amount showing there and there's a reason for that which I'll show you in a moment at the other end I've made just a little collar out of the same material and I'll just 
put that on there and the idea is that you slide that up and fit it into the body of the, the float like that. Obviously we'll be cutting off uh, this um, stem here at some point but at the moment all I've got to do now is to mix up some araldite to glue the four different floats I've made. So I'll crack on with that now. I've got all of the top area all glued up now and I've just put the sleeves onto each of the floats and I'm going to put some glue around the, um, the, the wooden part and also on the, the top of the sleeve itself and then I'm just going to push it into the, the body of the float. I'm going to do that for all four floats right now because the glue's going off, it's five minutes adhesive so bear with me while I get that done. So that's pretty much it as far as construction goes then guys. Uh, I think just before I go to paint I'll just give this a quick rub down and I'll just round over this end here. Something I should have mentioned before when you're putting this collar up inside the, the float is to make sure you've rubbed down this stem enough so that it's a reasonable sliding fit. The last thing you want is to start trying to slide it and then the thing wedges. So just a word of warning, just give that a quick sand down just to make sure that the thing fits. So that's everything finished for now then guys. Uh, the only thing I've got to do tonight now is just to get a coat of black paint on these and allow it to dry overnight. Come back in the morning, another coat of black paint and then we'll take it from there and I'll show you the results. So I managed to get two coats of paint on overnight and here's the result. Um, I did actually manage to get on a coat of uh, polyurethane varnish which is in my case marine varnish um, to finish them off to make them totally waterproof. So I'm quite pleased with the result. As you can see I've got two different sizes and I made four floats in all so I've got two spare ones sitting on the bench just in case I lose these. And just to show you how this works then, if I want to take that one out of there, take that one out of there and change it for a different colour, that's how easy it is. I can make them longer if I want to, although probably because these are such small floats I probably wouldn't do that. But when I come to make bigger floats with probably balsa bodies, I probably will make some longer insert ones if I want to do some paste fishing or something like that. So the only thing left for us to do now is to measure the floats and what I've done here I've just taken a piece of line I've got two pieces of silicon down here that piece of silicon will eventually sit under the float this one will come over the end and I've also got a piece do you remember I told you I was going to tell you about this little section here that's the bit where the, um, the plastic insert sits in and this little rubber sits on there. So I don't have an eye on this one, I just have that piece of silicon rubber. So again, it'll sit in the water like that. Now, in true uh, Blue Peter fashion, for those of you that are in the UK, I've already tried to uh, do the shotting. And if I just adjust this camera down a fraction for you. I said, I was going to do 50 millimeter uh, long bodies and some slightly longer ones. So this is the 50 millimeter one. I put 0.4 of a gram in there, two shots, two number fours, and hopefully you can see that that just sits. Don't want to get it too wet. It takes fractionally over 0.4 of a gram. So that would be two number fours and maybe a number eight, which wasn't a bad guess really, was it? So the only thing I've got to do now is take the, the larger floats and do the same for that. Hopefully those will take 0.5 of a gram and that'll be fine for what I want to do. So that's it then folks. That's how you make pole floats with interchangeable tips. Very, very simple and straightforward. The only thing I didn't mention is the tips themselves. Um, I have all sorts of different sets of them. This is just made out of the uh, barbecue skewers, the two millimeter ones, and I have them in different colors, different lengths, as you can see, some are longer than others, and I use them in pretty much all of my float fishing. Uh, just starting now to use them on the pole, um, which is why I've made these floats here, but for my waggler fishing I've got um, thicker ones, thinner ones, um, all sorts of different things. It just means that if the light conditions change, then I don't have to change your rig or change your float, I just change the tip. So I hope you enjoyed that folks. As usual, if you did, click the like button. You can subscribe if you want to. And until the next time then, bye for now.